Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Cycle Podcast. Today, I have Melissa Bucken with me, and it's Melissa B and Melissa B. That's just what we're going with today because we both have fun, unique last names, and I'm really grateful. She is going to talk to us a little bit about what she does. Um, she works in the fertility space and integrative health, and um, she's also going to tell us about her personal story and why she decided to get into those areas of health. So Melissa, welcome. Thank you so much for being on. We're excited to talk with you today. Melissa, thanks so much for having me. Yes, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Well, good. Why don't you start off just by telling us about yourself? It doesn't have to be your story, just like where are you located? You know, what's going on right now? Yeah, I am in Houston, Texas. I live in the suburbs and I am an integrative health coach and neo-fertility advisor. So I have an online program called Chart Your Cycle, and I work with women, helping them to understand and reclaim not only their menstrual cycle, but their reproductive health, which then leads to optimized health and overall improvement in your well-being. Because we are integrated. It's not, we're just not um, a series of parts. We are, it all comes together to make us who we are. So I love taking that integrative approach in the work that I do. Yeah, it's so, it's so needed and such a great topic. And obviously our podcast is about endometriosis and you know, fertility is definitely a struggle for a lot of people who suffer from this disease. And so I, I'm excited to get to chat with you more about what you do and how it can help. But tell us a little bit just about how did you get into this, you know, your personal journey and potential struggle and what kind of made you shift into working in this type of space? Yeah, you know, this definitely, this work, is, it's definitely unique work. When people ask me what I do, um, I tend to say, do you really want to know? <laughs> it's easier to just go to my website and read about it rather <laughs> than having a, a talk about periods and menstrual cycles and endometriosis in the grocery store line. But um, yeah, this unique work, it often comes with a personal story. And mine started back when I was a teenager. I was in high school and I had irregular periods. I was a late bloomer, didn't have my first menstrual period until I think I was already driving. I was 16 and they never regulated. But on top of that, I had chronic fatigue. I just didn't feel well, a lot of headaches, but I just kind of, you know, powered through and the camel or the straw that broke the camel's back. Is that the right way? I'm always bad with the little, <laughs> little phrases. I'm really bad with it. I usually say I'm like backwards and I'm like, yeah. does that make sense? <laughs> exactly. Um, so really what, what um, kind of the situation that really propelled me into this work. So I studied a summer as a foreign exchange student abroad. So here I was in a foreign country navigating a, a culture that wasn't um, my own in a language that I really wasn't fluent in, and I felt awful. It really was a great opportunity. If it weren't for the pictures, I probably wouldn't remember much of the trip. Fatigue, I mean, yes, jet lag, young, um, you know, probably staying up too late, but the fatigue, I just couldn't function. And on top of that, I had debilitating back pain. In fact, I thought I had a kidney infection and I was trying to navigate the healthcare system to get an evaluation when lo and behold, I started my period. I was back pain so severe that I didn't recognize it as, as menstrual cramps. Of course. How and, old, wait, was this when you were, is this? So I was, I was 17 years old. Okay. So you're wait, still in high school. So I was still like, in high school. Yeah. I'm a high school trip. student okay. at abroad, staying with a host family. I ruined their bed sheets. I was absolutely mortified. I mean, it was a pretty traumatic experience. It was embarrassing. And when you say it, fatigue though, too, mm -hmm. I want to like, I, I, I feel like this is such a common thread of having endo, but it's hard to even describe. So like for people who are listening that may not have it or just like, you know, friends, family, parents, whatever, mm -hmm. the fatigue is not like you're tired and need to take a nap. It's like you're walking through, at least for me, and I'd love to hear what you think. Like you're literally walking through like a bowl of like oatmeal or cement. Like you just cannot, you feel like you cannot like function in your brain, your body, everything. It's like, extreme fatigue. Yeah. It feels like you've been hit by a Mack truck and you're just trying to get your body to move. And for me, it's, it's always been kind of one of the, the telltale signs for me. And it's actually a recent study came out. I'll have to send it to you 
um, a physician sent it to me that that chronic fatigue is a telltale sign of endometriosis. Um, so they're starting to recognize it as as one of the like three main um, symptom identifiers. But yeah, you, you can't you can't function, you can't think, you you just have to make yourself move to the next thing. I mean, when I, I still struggle with bouts of, of chronic fatigue and it's like I'll fall asleep in the car line picking my kids up from school, no matter how much caffeine I've had, which, you know, is not the answer. <laughs> um, no no self-medicating, but, you know, we're all, nobody's perfect. Um, yeah, it, it's just, it's just a struggle. So here I was in a foreign land, this horrific period. I'm embarrassed. I don't feel well. So as soon as I got back to my state, the States, my mom took me to the doctor. We wanted answers. I wanted to know why I was in so much pain, why my periods were irregular and why I was so darn tired all of the time. And I really didn't get an answer. The solution I was given was the birth control pill. And I was told to be healthy and responsible, take the birth control pill. It will regulate your cycles, which we know it doesn't really regulate your cycles. It just kind of forces a withdrawal bleed every 30 days. Now the symptoms, so the pill can help with symptoms um, that are caused by endometriosis. So it helped with some of the menstrual cramps and the pain, the fatigue, it didn't touch. And I gained a lot of weight and I just, I still, I just felt off. You knew something was wrong. I knew something was off, but I took the pill for about four years. So fast forward, I'm in college and my degree is in biology. So I was studying biology and I remember it clearly. I was sitting in my, in the lecture hall for anatomy and physiology and we were studying the female reproductive system. And our professor gave a lecture on the mechanism of the birth control pill, essentially how it shuts down the communication between the pituitary gland and the ovary. And he did such a great job of explaining it that a light bulb went off in my mind. Aha, I am doing nothing to heal my body. I'm just covering up the symptoms. It's a Band-Aid approach. Here I was, I was exercising. I was trying to eat all of the right things. I was really into self-care to optimize my health and well-being. But yet I was essentially putting a synthetic chemical in my body that was just shutting the system down. And I don't think I've, I mentioned this, Melissa, but in addition to say the doctor, when I was 17 years old, wanting help, I was told that, you know, the healthy, responsible thing was to be on the pill. And if I ever wanted children, IVF was probably my best option. Now, granted, I was a high schooler, 17 years old, having children was nowhere in my thought process. So fast forward to the work I do today, I get this all the time from women. I am not the only one who has been told this narrative. And every time I, a woman tells me this, I have to do some deep breathing because I start to turn red in the face. Yeah. That this, this, this narrative is still being perpetuated and, and taught by women, told by women. So, um, so here I am, I ditched the pill, I went back to my dorm room, I threw the pill packet in the trash can and I started searching for answers. I had some great mentors and it led me to charting my cycle, working with a doctor who practiced restorative reproductive medicine. I got a diagnosis. I was on the path to figuring this out. I also um, got married just right around that time, about a year or two later. And with all of the lifestyle changes that I'd been making, I was able to achieve a pregnancy. But this How was your process. pain? So when you stopped the pill and you mm -hmm. started charting your cycle and kind of changing your lifestyle, mm -hmm. was your pain still consistent or did you feel better? So it depends on really lifestyle. So for me, and I know it's different for everybody, it really for is sure. a spectrum issue, right? Everybody, yes. some women have it severe, women have it mild, some, some women have very severe cases, no pain. My pain is directly correlated to my self-care. If I'm not sleeping well and if I'm eating too much processed food, if I'm drinking too much alcohol or drinking too much caffeine, I will have pain. Um, it'll be pain in my ovaries and in my abdomen, but then it also will be joint pain and muscle stiffness as well. Okay. So, um, so really I, I, and as I get older, I'm much more sensitive. I don't rebound near as quickly as I did in, in the early years. Yes. I understand so, that. Okay. Yeah. So sorry. So go back. So yeah. you met your husband, you got yeah, married. So, so we got married and we're actually able to achieve, we have three children all conceived naturally, but this was such a transformational experience for me discovering the beauty of charting your cycle and taking a restorative approach. I have not had surgery um, for, for my condition. It was planned, 
but I was able to achieve a pregnancy. So I didn't need it. And I just haven't felt that it's been the, the right choice for me. Sure. Understanding that a good surgical complete excision surgery is the gold standard for endometriosis. It really is um, important that you find a surgeon who's specializes. That's all the surgery that they do is endometrial excision, excision surgery. Yeah. Um, but I, I, so I began my work, work in the fertility awareness arena, um, really teaching women about their menstrual cycle, giving alternatives to the birth control pill for a natural approach to birth control. And then when I moved to Houston, we have four fellowship trained NAPRO technology doctors. These doctors are um, specialists in the surgical technique for full excision with endometriosis, as well as a host of other reproductive issues. So the clientele that I, the demographic of my clientele switched dramatically. It was, it was shifted from more of like the natural minded women who were wanting to uh, practice natural birth control to women who were struggling with infertility, failed IUI, IVF. So that led me down the path to get trained as an integrative health coach through Duke Integrative Medicine. And so now that is paired with my cycle charting program as well. Led me to join the Chartneo team where I'm um, part of uh, the development team. And so we've created a charting app that follows the medical management model. And we have a web portal platform that's HIPAA and GDPR compatible. Our hope here is that medical clinicians who recognize the importance of a well-charted cycle will be able to use this tool in their practice so that they can have efficient chart evaluation for their patients. So kind of in a nutshell, that's, that's what I do. It's been a long journey and I don't see myself leaving this work anytime soon. I'm absolutely passionate about it. Wow. I, I mean, that's amazing though, what you've done too, that you just happen to hear that in that class. It's just very serendipitous sometimes how I think these things fall into place and you kind of find your, your passion projects and turn them into day-to-day -day life. That's great. So I'm sure a lot of people that are listening are like, I have no idea what she's talking about. What, what does this mean? So can you tell us just a little bit like charting your cycle? It's really what it sounds, right? Exactly what it sounds like. Can you tell us a little bit about what exactly that means for someone who's never done it or never heard that term before, or, or maybe even just a good resource for them to, to look it up? Oh, yes. We could talk probably for hours about this. So charting your cycle first, I want to make the distinction that it's not the same as tracking your period. There are a ton of period tracker apps out there. Every woman at the bare minimum should be tracking her period because what, I mean, gosh, you go to the dentist and they ask you when was the first day of your last menstrual period. It's an important biomarker in women. It's actually documented in the medical literature as a fifth vital sign in women, right up there with blood pressure, heart rate, and temperature. So if you know what you're looking for and you're able to plot it out well, it really does tell a story of the hormonal symphony that is going on in your body, particularly the ovarian hormones, estrogen and progesterone. We can understand if they're in alignment and it's not enough to identify when ovulation occurs, but what is the quality of that ovulation? So when you create a well-charted cycle, you're actually creating a diagnostic tool. And then I work with women to help them build a web of support to connect with clinicians who take a restorative approach to reproductive medicine so that they can use that diagnostic tool to start individualized cycle targeted analysis. So at, at the simplest level, what we're looking for is the cervical mucus pattern. I'm a big believer. I work with women who are busy. They're high achievers. They do not want the practice of charting your cycle to be a burden. And so my kind of phrase that I love to use is charting is more than a method. It's a lifestyle. We have to find something that is simple for you to incorporate into your activity of daily living. Yeah. Cervical mucus is a direct response to estrogenic activity. So your, the pituitary uh, gland in your brain is talking to your ovaries. It produces estrogen, which then acts on the cervical crypts to produce a very characteristic type of mucus that a woman can easily observe and then chart throughout her cycle. Okay. And so we're looking for the patterns. We're looking at the follicular phase, the ovulatory event, the luteal phase, the bleeding patterns, any abnormal bleeding pattern. The interesting thing with endometriosis is there's not a one size fits all endo chart. I can spot a polycystic ovarian chart from a mile away. Um, we, we can tell that there's a luteal deficiency, but endo, it's kind of, it has a lot of silent, um, 
flags, if you will. I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but it, it's a difficult one. It really is. So you really have to take a very good in, intake um, when working with women to see if they are showing uh, symptoms of, of endometriosis. But when we're looking at their chart, especially if they're trying to achieve a parameters in that cycle. And the goal is to optimize that cycle to increase their chances of a healthy conception. That's, I mean, that's really helpful information. If people want to get just more information about, because obviously that's something we can't go super deep into, but very interesting for me to even hear that. And I also think what you said about how it's harder to recognize endometriosis I feel like that is it across the board in every aspect of endo because just so much is still unknown about it, but also I think it manifests itself in different ways in different people. And I just, that's why I think it's also just very difficult to learn more about. You're absolutely right. I mean, it takes what on average, I think around seven to 10, yeah, seven, seven to 10, 10 years. years to get a diagnosis. I had a client recently who she's going through the excision process and she was working with a pulmonary specialist to have endo excised off of her lung. Yeah. It really is a, an enigma of yeah. a condition. And it affect, it just affects people so differently. I have this conversation all the time because you can meet someone that has a stage four that has never had surgery and is is feeling okay by changing their lifestyle and diet like what you're talking about you can meet someone that's a stage 2 that's had five excision surgeries but is still in pain and suffering so it just there's not there's there's no rhyme or reason which is a struggle but i think in the positive light i think what you're doing really helps that excision is becoming more well known the disease itself is becoming more well known but i still like you said I still talk to people who may be 20 or 21 that are told painful cramps are normal, take the birth control pill and you're fine. And so that is where I think a lot of the issue needs to be like headed off the pass. Like that's you're absolutely right. Because if we look at that, you're not, when we're working with these young women, a early twenties, it's about setting them up for success and feeling well for the rest of their life. And when they go on the pill, the symptoms will get better maybe um, if for the immediate interim, but long-term, no woman should be on the birth control pill for the entirety of her reproductive lifetime. No. And we know that it depletes your body of essential nutrients that are key to healing and, and restoring your body at a cellular level. Yeah. So it really is important to, to get this word out um, about fertility awareness and body awareness. And it's not just charting. So I, I mentioned the very basic cervical mucus, yeah. but then we can also add on a whole host of others, um, symptoms and signs and hormonal tests. But for endometriosis, I think it's very important that a woman track her symptoms. And if she can recognize a pattern of when the pain is most prevalent, when fatigue tends to rear its ugly head, it, there may not be a pattern, but there very well may be. It may be correlated to what phase she is in her menstrual cycle. It may be correlated to specific lifestyle choices. So if she can get a handle on that, she's learning to read her body. She's learning to be the expert in her own health. And women, we are very intuitive. If we take the time to listen, which it gets harder and harder to listen in today's noisy world. Yeah. But if we take that time to listen, if we build, I call charting your cycle a daily empowerment practice. It really is allowing you to tune into your body. I absolutely love charting my cycle. I can't imagine not doing it. It's great to celebrate a nice balanced cycle. It gives affirmation when you are working through an imbalanced cycle yeah. that you're not crazy. You're not going off the deep end. The, the data shows in your chart that something is off balance. When you can communicate that with your partner and show them what's going on, there's a level of understanding there. So like my husband will know, okay, you're being kind of mean. I'm not going to take it personally. So I'm just going to give you your space, might draw a nice warm bubble bath for you and just let you be. <laughs> Like those conversations happen in my house as well. <laughs> no, I I 100% agree. And, you know, people who listen to the podcast know I say this all the time, but a big kind of breakthrough for me as someone who suffered for so long and even advocating, and I'm not perfect, I'm not a doctor, I've said wrong things while I've been advocating because there's so much unknown. 
but I started working with, I had gained weight, you know, my hormones were all over the place. And I started working with a personal trainer and I had to send my food in every day. And I started to notice like, I was always nauseous these like one or two weeks of the month and like my food was different. And I was like, Hmm, that's weird. And he replied to me and said, can you start tracking for me the days that you're nauseous? Just do it for 30 days. And I found out that I was nauseous 70% of the month. And I was like, Whoa, something that's not like, we just did it by the day. And then percentage wise we realized, and I was like, that's really crazy. And then, I also started after that, I started tr- like everything I eat plus my pain. So like I knew like if some sort of food triggered me or something like that. And then lastly, I noticed, which also just was mind blowing to me. I always had this neck and shoulder pain. I thought it was because I carried this heavy bag with my laptop every day and I'm schlepping it all over town. And then I started to notice, wow, it's really always just right before my cycle. And then I was like, oh, inflammation, because I have endo, it's just flaring up. And then I had someone on the podcast who was like, oh, I thought I was carrying a bag and I thought like it, exact same thing. And she's like, and then I found out that I had endometriosis on my diaphragm. And I was like, and I Googled it and I was like, oh my goodness, like I would have never known all of that if I didn't start writing it all down and tracking everything as I know that it can be a lot, especially if you're going through the disease, but even doing it for 30 to 60 days really opened my eyes. Now, every day I track my pain every night before I go to bed, I track, where's my pain, what happened, what's going on. And I see exact patterns. It is exactly around my cycle. The phases that you're just talking about exactly. That's incredible. That is incredible. And you know what? You're, you had two cases. I'm the third, the neck and shoulder tension. We were chatting just before we started recording this podcast. I just got back from acupuncture to help relieve this neck tension that I get every month. And it just, I've learned how to manage it. It's yeah. not fun. Um, and I too, I thought, you know what? I've just carried a diaper bag for too many years. I'm well out of the diaper bag phase, but I thought I you know, did permanent damage to, to uh, the, that area of my body. Say, I mean, I, I went to physical therapy, everything before I even thought that it correlated. Now I'm making an assumption because I haven't been diagnosed with it on my diaphragm, but I just, once I started tracking it, I was like, Okay. This well, is... and with endometriosis, it's an inflammation response in the body. And so it's not just one area. Like, we, again, we're an integrative being. So if one area is inflamed, there's an inflammation response going on throughout your entire body. Yeah. We're not just isolated by our different biological systems. For sure. For sure. Thanks to each other. I know. I know. So for everyone listening, I'm sure, are there any like tactics or, or tips that you've really learned, you know, integrative health wise along the way that are small things that people could adjust today to at least start feeling a little bit better. I love to provide a little bit of tactical things that people can slowly start to roll out to maybe help reduce the pain a bit. Yeah. So these are, I mean, these are going to be kind of very, very generalized, but sure. I always start with sleep. Prioritize your sleep seven to eight hours and sleep hygiene. If you're not getting seven to eight hours consistently, if you're waking up in the middle of the night, feeling a little bit panicky, you have a hard time falling asleep. um, You wake up feeling exhausted. You need to focus on your sleep hygiene before anything else. So reverse engineer, what time do you want to wake up in the morning and you want to wake up well rested? Okay. Reverse engineer back eight hours. What time do you need to get to bed? Then an hour before that, you need to start winding down, turning off all screens and create a bedtime ritual that you look forward to that is calming to your system. Our body repairs itself while we sleep. If we are compromising our sleep, it's going to be really hard to push the needle with nutrition, with meditation, with exercise, with any of the other stuff. So I think that's the first thing. And I always love women to to start charting their cycle. Just try it out. Um, Our app, Chart Neo, it's free for 45 days. You can try it out. And then it's only $10 a year. So it's really, we try to keep this a very affordable. Now it does follow a medical management model. So there is a learning curve. So you can always reach out to me if you need help in navigating um, that tool. 
Okay, great. We'll link everything in the show notes, all of Melissa's information and everything. Is there anything else, you know, you want to add or where people can find you or, you know, any other last minute kind of things that you're thinking about yeah. for the endo community? Well, so you can find me at melissabucken.com and I have a fun cycle guide. So it's melissabucken.com uh, forward slash cycle guide, or you'll see it if you just go to my uh, main website. And this will show you a few examples of what a well-charted cycle looks like. So you can look through those, see if you relate to any of those. Um, women with endometriosis, there's a good likelihood that there may be a comorbidity. So there's something else going on as well. So charting your cycle, that's kind of the first step at starting to get answers. And whether or not you have a proper diagnosis, which proper diagnosis is surgical. So we if we suspect endometriosis, and again, I, I don't diagnose, I'm a health coach, but I help point women in the direction of getting that supportive community. And one of the great things that have come from the crazy of COVID is that there are really fabulous physicians who are now offering telemedicine. And with this type of approach, it starts with that well-charted cycle, they're going to evaluate that. And then it's cycle targeted evaluations, blood work that's cycle targeted to your cycle, as well as potentially follicular ultrasound or other investigation that can be done locally. So those orders are, are made and then you just find the, the resources in your area that provide those services. Um, so yeah, to learn more about charting your cycle, check out the cycle guide, visit me at melissabucken.com. Um, I love to talk to women. I have a 20 minute complimentary discovery calls. I do share a little bit about my program, but it's also just a space for a woman to share what they're going through and what kind of solution they're looking for. Not every woman is a good fit for my program. I fully recognize that. So if the program is not a good fit, we are going to brainstorm what the next best step is for you in your journey to healing. Living with endometriosis, um, it's not, it doesn't define who you are, but you do have to live your life a little differently than those people who don't struggle with this issue. And that's okay. So it's learning to embrace the good and really have a concrete plan for mitigating the, the negative symptoms and the issues that we do deal with. So I always say my mantra, which I, I say every day to my children, they tell me it's going to be printed on my tombstone, is that there are no shortcuts to any place worth going. So I just encourage women to, to keep hope, trust your body. Our bodies are beautifully made, beautifully made. And it's frustrating to hear that when we're suffering with endometriosis. But for all of those ladies who are um, endo warriors, your body is still beautiful and there is, is hope. And my goal for every woman is that they feel well that they have some answers and that they they're supported in their journey. Very, very, very well said, Melissa. Beautifully said. It's, it is a struggle, but there is hope and um, people like you doing wonderful work and helping out is so great. I really appreciate you, wh what you do and sharing everything. Um, and is there social media or anywhere where people can find you or is your website the best place? Um, I do have a, a social um platforms as well. I, I will say I'm not super active on them. I do my best, but my priority is working with my clients. Uh, so Facebook and Instagram, it's a Virtus Fertility Care. So my company name is Virtus Fertility Care and Chart Recycle is a program of Virtus Fertility Care. Virtus means courage. And I chose that because um, this is a, a courageous approach to healthcare. I really feel that this approach is reclaiming women's health, rebuilding women's health but it takes courage to go against the grain. Um, you know, I was told again at, at 17, go on the pill. If you want babies, IVF is your best option. And I know I'm not the only one being told that. So I am here to do what I can to make sure that women have options if that's not the road that they want to take. Yeah, that's, that's great, Melissa. Well, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with us, teaching us a little bit about charting our cycle. Very interesting. And um, I think very helpful and you know, I, we hope that you continue to feel well and keep doing the great work that you're doing. Thank you so much for coming on. Well, it's, it's a pleasure. And you too, keep doing the work that you're doing. Uh, you are definitely a light to women who are in this journey.